Hello, crypto boys and ghouls. Welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer, where we feature content on play and earn games on the blockchain, such as Alluvium. And in today's video, I just wanted to go through and spend some time testing out a theory from one of our fellow Web3 content creators, Bulldog, who recently did a video on profitability in stage three. And I wanted to see if we could uh, put that to the test, right? Um, look at Alluvium stage three battles and specifically see, can we level up our account in our, basically our alluvials, our gear, our resources, and basically do that while breaking even or making a little bit of money from stage three runs. So we're gonna give this a try here in this video and put that to the test. I'm gonna link Bulldog's video in the video description below if you're curious to see uh, that content on Alluvium as well. And before we hop into the run and I'll go through my prep and the plan here, uh, just as a content creator, if you wanna support this channel within Alluvium, you can enter the referral code of TALES, T-A-L-E-S, in your profile settings under your referral and that alliance code certainly helps out the channel and allows us to create more content with that being said what i wanted to do is talk about how we have prepped for our first stage three run in alluvium uh, specifically here we can see we have some flint caps we have uh flint caps for experience for leveling our uh, alluvials that we're going to take here we also have a few ring nuts here as well farmed out of tier zero for free in case we need to extend our xp um, farming in stage three for as long as possible that's definitely a strategy i'd recommend if you're going to do a stage three or a stage two or stage two one stage one run is have ring nuts available from stage zero which are free allowing you to make sure you maximize your xp gain on those runs that you're paying for so in addition to the consumables of the flint cap for xp leveling we also have gumbo drops to make sure we're able to do damage um, and we also crafted a drone upgrade here which allows us to get a four percent chance to duplicate ore and we have a random ability of 1% chance to duplicate essence. So hopefully that'll help um, in this stage three run. Maybe we get an ore duplication or two during this run. Now from an alluvial perspective, what we've done is we put the best team that we've been able to uh, gather so far for this stage three. So we're gonna try and win some battles here. Uh, we have a team that consists of two predators, a uh, tier one, stage two chukarol a uh, tier one stage two excuse me tier one stage three exalted gorilla which we're able to defuse we have a dash uh tier four stage one rogue we have a hollow uh tier one stage three gyro that we're able to fuse and we have our last two units here a tier one stage two tiruo and a tier three stage two quinks now that's our main team that we're going to try and use to win battles here we also have two alluvials on the side here uh the chukrol and a tiro a second one of those each that we're going to use to level up and just get experience so that we can eventually get to stage three on those units um and i should probably check just to make sure we have our shards i don't know go back to sancta mesa here to make sure we have any if we have any shards to craft real quick make sure we have shards to catch stuff with in case we run across something worthwhile shards here um looks like we can craft an uncommon here let's go ahead and add that to the mix and then we'll head back and go into this run uh, we'll talk about our strategy once we get there let me refresh we bought our fuel for this run uh, it's 1350 krypton which we bought from the market here and that cost eleven dollars and 35 cents so what we're going to try and do is in this run 
gather enough resources that we can sell back to basically get that $11.35 back, plus have something left over to show for our time here in stage three. So let's go ahead and do it. And once we hop in to the stage here, I'll talk about um, what our strategy is gonna be. Now we can go into Brightland Steps or we can go into Abyssal Basin. Um, you know, Brightland Steps will have air, alluvials. We need basically a vermilio or vermilia uh, to add to our team at some point, which would be nice to get from Brightland Steps. Abyssal Basin, a rake would be nice to get from Abyssal Basin. Um, so it's going to be hard to say um, which one is better to go to uh, for our first trip. Um, I guess it's a coin toss. Um, let's, let's go to Abyssal Basin. Maybe we can get a rake here and uh, save us some, some money there. Let's go stage one, Abyssal Basin, and I say stage two, stage three, Abyssal Basin here, and uh, let's see what we can get. So off we go. $11.35 was just burnt from existence here from our account in fuel, and we're gonna see if we can extract that value in the marketplace out of this run. Now, because we're paying real money to play the game here at this point, um, we're going to want to be as efficient as possible with both our time, our resources, and our energy. So basically the strategy that I'm going to employ here is we're going to focus on hitting basically yellow rocks, which will give us access ideally to gemstones to sell, blue rocks, which will give us a few plants for essences. We're gonna target flint caps and gumdrops for the plants that we're gonna harvest to try and get some essences. We're gonna map our ergon rifts with our teleport beacons. And then we're also gonna search for the big rock uh, formations to mine. And last but not least, we're going to farm and search out as many alluvials as possible. And that's gonna be our game plan for this particular run. Let's see, take a look what the map looks like from a heat map perspective. It's all red to start. That's good uh, right around the starting point here. Let's go ahead and head east, see what we see. Again, we're gonna to wanna to prioritize yellow rocks uh, blue rocks and specific plants here um, and we're gonna take our time we got a yellow rock over here we'll just take our time and grab this what are we gonna get here we got a rare water gem out of that and definitely what I would say is if you're gonna do a run in a stage three or any stage that has you know significant cost to it uh, from your account. Take your time, do it methodically, and don't rush it. And uh, that's going to be the strategy I would recommend. We got a resplendent earth gem there on our second yellow rock. That's pretty good. That should give us some value here. We've got a blue rock here, which will give us hopefully some shards. Let's take a look. We got three rare shards and a resplendent shard. So we're already getting some good stuff here to start uh, with this resource mining. And uh, yeah, we'll see if it continues to go well here. Our first stage three run in the books. Let's see what we got coming out of this. So let's walk through the data and see if it was indeed possible to level up our accounts while profiting in a stage three run here. And if you follow my YouTube channel for previously for Splinterlands content, you know I really like to use data and we're gonna use this here for Alluvium as well. And I think you're gonna find this very interesting. So here was our stage three run here. And we were able to capture a hollow wink was the best thing we were able to get from an alluvial perspective. 
We had a chance to catch an Ador, but we lost the battle. It had damage modifications and it was a very high mastery point battle around like 700 mastery points. And we just weren't able to win the fight. So we weren't able to attempt to catch the Ador. Now, when we look at the data, realize that the Ador it sells for like three to four dollars more than this hollow wink so that would have been an extra three or four dollars in potential revenue for us you can see here um, we got some gems we got some shards we got some essences and what we did is we broke it out into a spreadsheet which you can see here and the cost of the run was eleven dollars and 35 cents in fuel what we have here of is every list of everything that we caught in the middle here, as well as the floor price at the time of the video. If we are to sell everything at the floor price, we would have sold that for $12.98. All the NFTs that we got on this run, uh, and that would have been a profit of $1.63, right? That's uh, after fees and that's after everything. Now, you can see on the right here, we also got a number of ores that we could, uh, in the future, craft ingots for use in the game for our own purposes, for drones or for gear, or we could craft ingots and sell those on the market as well. Um, so we got all of those that aren't taken into account here in the uh, profit. And we have consumables that we can use in future battles as well here, some flint caps, some gumbo drops and stuff like that. So with the stage three run, we're able to profit $1.63. I wanted to test this a little bit more as well. So I ran a subsequent stage three run later on there. And what we got is we, we had a pretty bad run, to be honest with you. Um, the best alluvial that we were able to capture here was a hollow slap in. And we really um, didn't get really high quality gems or shards on this run. And if you look at the data here, uh, this run costs us $11.21 worth of fuel. And if you look at what we were able to uh, farm out of stage three in this particular case was $7.88. So in this particular stage three run, we were able to, well, we basically lost $3.33. So there's variance in the stage three runs. You're not gonna profit on every run. And that's kind of the, the fun of it, if I can call it that, because there is the element of chance. You don't know if you're going to turn around a corner and run into a dark hollow, you know, stage three or a hollow tier five alluvial or get you know a uh, a tatupi, right? So you just don't know what you're gonna get in these runs sometimes, and there's a element of chance here. We did get a number of ores and consumables as well here, but if we were to do this run, well, we would have lost money here. But I wanna show you a video here of the third stage three run that we did here for this study. I think you're gonna find it very interesting. So here we are in our final stage three run here we had marked an encounter earlier on in the run with that pin on the map and we're looking for the encounter we can't find it it disappeared off the map we did find one encounter for quite a bit farther south and we happened to scan it and there it is we scanned it and that was the encounter we we're looking for it's got a ramp fee there it was a little confusing because the encounter said water encounter and it was very far away from where we originally shot the alluvial and came back to it uh, later on. Uh, but we did run into a Rampy in this uh, third stage three run. And that's a big deal because if we are to win this battle and somehow capture this Rampy, the floor price of that Rampy is over $40 right now. So that is a very valuable tier five. But you can see here, the mastery points for this battle are huge. We're talking like, I guess 700 plus, and uh, it's it's gonna be a tough battle. They've got a ram fee. It looks like they've got a ram fire here. They've got uh, an Adorius. Um, this is gonna be a tough battle for us to win. And we, we pulled out pretty much all the stops here. You can see we're, we're setting up our strategy and our tactics here uh, to hit pretty hard 
that back line and then we're trying to strategically figure out where we're going to place uh, the quinks and the vermilda here. Uh, for this particular run, you can see that um, we're able to get some leveled up uh, units here. We're running a um, Jakundi Stage 3 now, along with our Exalted Grilla. We're able to run a Tiburuko uh, Stage 3 as well. Um, we're able to get our dash to a rake. And the way we're able to do all of that is by farming experience in the previous uh, two stage three runs using flint caps, using the gems that we had gotten in those runs to be able to fuse those. So our team after just two stage three runs is much improved. And you can't really discount that. When we talk about profitability, sure, there's profitability potentially in running these stage three runs for selling items, but there's also just the ability to level up your teams, your alluvials, and your gameplay here in Alluvium with these runs as well through experience. You can see here we're kidding out all of our damage dealers with gumbo drops. We have plenty of those from uh, our runs. We're putting flora balls on the quinks and the vermilla um, and you know we're still leveling up things like we got an extra dash in there just to level up here in stage three to get to an umbre eventually so we're, we're being conscientious on how we're we're playing the game there's a lot of strategy here and it's really it's really an interesting concept here it's a really fun part of the game is you know, how do you build your teams? How do you, for overworld at least, be able to do stage three runs and get to them to a point where they're very capable of winning battles like this? And then we haven't even talked about how you can use these same units in Ascendant Arena and use that game mode to win prizes and do the leaderboard there as well. So Alluvium has a lot going for it. We're not going to talk necessarily about it too much in this video we'll do future videos on it but here's the battle playing out here those gumdrops are uh super helpful here for us to chew through that team and you can see we just totally uh wiped that team out pretty quickly and we had uh, over 250 uh mastery points left over to capture this uh ramphy so you can see here we've got epic shards uh 34 percent chances here because it only costs 50 um, mastery points to try and make this attempt we've got basically six attempts to capture this alluvial so my strategy was basically i was going to throw uh three epic shards at this and then if that didn't work i was going to use our trick that we had in our other video uh to go out in the marketplace and buy resplendent shard come back in the game and start throwing resplendent shards one at a time to catch this resplendent shards are about ten dollars a shard and uh you know a forty dollar alluvial we could probably spend uh two or three resplendent shards and still make a profit here so this is our second epic shard 34 percent chance here and we brick that as well this is our third and final epic shard attempt here on this ramp fee and then if uh, this doesn't work. We're going to the marketplace and buying a resplendent, cured resplendent shard coming in the game, trying to get this capture and trying to get this done. We've got a chance here on this epic shard, tier five, $40 alluvial, and bam, we got it. Uh, epic shard, 34% chance. That seems to be the sweet spot for, for tier fives, honestly, if you can capture them with epics with multiple chances because resplendent shards are not cheap. They're about close to $10 a shard and still not a guaranteed chance there. So coming out of that third stage three run, the final kind of test here for us to run for this video, you can see we got a ram fee. We ended up getting a dash. We got resplendent shards, both on the shard side as well as on the gem side. And we got a runation essence as well. So we got a lot of good stuff on this particular run. If we look at the profitability here, you know, we had fuel of $11.15 at the time of this run. We threw three epic shards at um, 
the ram fee to catch that now we just spent the hyperion to cure those shards um we didn't actually buy epic shards off the market so that was three dollars and 96 cents worth of hyperion so the cost of this run was 15 dollars and 11 cents essentially uh, with fuel and epic shards and you can see here with all the uh stuff that we we're able to gather here obviously ram fee being a major component here forty dollars for that the renation essence is four dollars and twenty cents the dash is three dollars and eight cents on the current market right now floor and all these floor prices honestly are selling quite rapidly i've been making a number of sales uh for out throughout the last week uh, since the game has launched no problems there I'll probably do a future video on analytics of the marketplace and how Alluvium sales are going uh, in the future here on the channel. But you can see here the total sales here on the floor prices is $51.82 from that run, which is a total profit of $36.71 for this run. You can see here we got a, a bunch of other ores uh, as well in this run and consumables in addition to all the XP uh, for our alluvials. So, yeah, I mean, you know, $36.71 in profit there. Uh, we've got a loss of $3.33 there. In our first run, we had a profit of $1.63. So what is the verdict here? Can you level up while also profiting money-wise by running stage three runs in Alluvium? And the answer is it depends. Uh, we showed here through these three runs, we made... Uh, over $30 in profit um, on these three runs. A lot of that was in that RAM fee, but you know, that's kind of the, the luck of the draw, the chance. Even without the RAM fee, with the first two runs, we were only down like about a dollar seventy um, for running two stage three runs after uh, the possibility of selling all of those items. Uh, you know, plus we got all those ores and the XP. So you know, I think it's definitely very possible to at least run stage three currently in the current market and kind of break even um, or, or tend to break even with variants probably uh, fairly easily with the potential to also, uh, if you hit some nice things like ramp fees or hollows or dark hollows, uh, quite get some quite nice profits as well in the current uh, environment for Alluvium. Now, this is not financial advice. Obviously, do your own research, but I wanted to share here my experiences with this. I ran these three stage three runs, and honestly, coming out of this, I'll be running more stage three runs and continuing to level up my account here because there isn't as uh, much risk here as you might think. Um, there's definitely, it takes work to do the stages from a time perspective it takes work to then sell those items on the marketplace so you know that takes time and effort but for your time and effort if you enjoy that part of the game which i do it's part of the game i liked with splinterlands as well doing the rental markets doing the sales and, and flipping cards and all that stuff so i i like that that's kind of like the game within the game it definitely exists here within alluvium as well so i think stage three runs are profitable even for those on a budget or who don't want to really pay uh to play web3 games there's a possibility here to do kind of tread water and level up your account without risking too much capital here so one thing i'll leave you with here um, if you want to add your favorite content creator to your profile under the alliance code you can do so under your profile and your account settings here you can see here i am supporting bulldog he's also another great content creator on the web3 side but if you would like to support me in my alluvium content you can put in the referral code there tales t-a-l-e-s it helps the channel out and until next time Keep stacking those stats.